In mid-October, I flew back to New York City on book tour. Aside from visiting the Occupy Times Square protest, the major highlight of my tour was my interview with Michelangelo Signorelli on his show on Sirius XM. Welcome back. I'm Michelangelo Cedarelli on Sirius XM Alq 108. Uh, my guest, who I've been telling you about, is Christine Beatty, author of a memoir called Not Your Average American Girl. And it chronicles her journey from being a member of the military, a married man, husband, to becoming transsexual, a prostitute, recovery from addiction, uh, and then achievement of her most uh, improbable dreams, as she says, and joins me now in studio to talk all about her story. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. So it really is uh, quite a, a, a story and quite a journey that you uh, went on. And it's true of so many people who um, come to terms with their gender identity that often there's an odyssey uh, for quite a while before they really find who they are. And yet others, it's something that clicks so quickly. Tell us a bit about your story and why you would enter the military, um, why you would get married, what you were not wanting to face about yourself. Uh, many trans women um, state, you know, they knew from like kindergarten on that they were in the wrong body. I kind of felt more like I was on the wrong planet. Mm -hmm. And it took me uh, two decades, really, you know, from kindergarten on until I started to connect my feeling like I didn't fit in with being a transsexual woman. And yet you would do all kinds of things to, I guess, deny it to yourself. And, and um, well, I, I'm curious what entering the military was about. How did that decision um, become, you know, about because of your being transgender? I think it was part of just looking for a place to fit in in the world. Part of me wasn't ready to go on to college at that point because I was high school was so socially painful and I wasn't cut out for blue collar work and I wasn't really qualified to do anything else or you know certainly didn't have a resume and the military seemed like a good place to go and uh, you know discover myself and to um, just bring about a drastic life change and I was just searching for answers. Now you married as well and. Were you ever questioning your sexual orientation through oh, any of this? Or Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, my first adult sexual experience was with my roommate, um, uh, a man I identified in the book named Ron. And the thing was, I'd, I'd been attracted to women, you know, all my life. And I guess I was so horny at the time, and Ron was coming on to me, and I thought, what the hell? You know, I wasn't getting any late any other way. Um, I... I I identify mostly as lesbian now, but I mean, you can't be a prostitute and enjoy your work like I did without being at least a Kinsey four or a five. So <laughs> well, we'll come to that. Uh, but so when you were uh, you were attracted to women then, though, and you got married, you obviously weren't really um, at that point struggling with sexual orientation as much as gender identity. Correct. I just wanted to be normal, and uh, since I'd been primarily attracted to women, I thought, well, I am I guess I'm a guy. I'm apparently a guy, and uh, I just wanted to be with somebody, and, and I fell in love. And Now, you uh, mentioned, of course, it was San Francisco. A lot of this plays out in San Francisco, in the Tenderloin, uh, particularly when you would uh, become a prostitute. How do you... Uh, I'm not politically correct <laughs> at all, okay? <laughs> Tell us how you, um, how you go from being married uh, member of the military to a transgender sex worker or a transsexual prostitute. Not long after moving to the Tenderloin and starting to go out in the public as a woman, uh, I faced the kind of bullying I'm really I mean it's it's whether right. it happens to, to kids in, in school or if it happens to an adult out on the street when you've got somebody dumping on you for being different and and it's non-stop it's happening every day it's gonna beat you down how I fell into prostitution was while I was in college I took a job doing house cleaning because 
between some money that my grandparents were giving me for college and the Veterans Administration and so forth. I didn't have enough money, you know, to pay my rent and pay for he- female hormones and women's clothes and all that. So I took a house cleaning job. When I was ready to go full time, the house cleaning company forbid me. And this is in liberal San Francisco, mind you. They forbid me to work as a woman. They essentially fired me. You know, um, for right. for wanting to transition. So and I had be, to, and at that time there were no laws protecting transgender people in California. No, of course there still aren't nationally, but California does have those laws now. And, and but it certainly didn't help me. I had to pay my rent. I had to buy food. So I did what all of my other role models were doing in the tenderloin. I started turning tricks. My guest is Christine Beatty. Her book is. Not Your Average American Girl, a memoir. I'm Michelangelo Ciarelli on Sirius XM LQ 108. You then would begin uh, having a struggle with drug addiction as well. Yes. Well, uh, feeling beaten down ever since I first stepped out of the house wearing a dress um, and having people yelling freak and faggot at me all the time. Uh, it it took its toll on me. I mean, I, I was a, I was sort of a pothead. I was a partier before that, but... Uh, when I needed to be straight, like for college or something, I, you know, I, I wasn't really an addict in that sense. But in order to deal with all of the negativity that I faced on a constant basis, I started doing harder and harder drugs because just pot and booze wasn't cutting it anymore. Mm. So you would try living as a man again. And that's when I became a hopeless junkie. I, I, oh, wow. I had one chance after another. And so it became clear to me that uh, I was an addict and it wasn't the, the the transgender issue at all. And so I went to a Veterans Administration rehab and only six weeks there and all of my gender feelings came flooding back. I came to the realization that if I did not retransition, I was either going to start shooting heroin again or just flat out kill right. myself. So the Veterans Administration actually helped you in that way. <laughs> well, that, that the only thing they really helped me with was getting clean and sober. Right, right. They had no right. counselors oh, there no, no, to no. talk I, about no. that. And so that's why I started writing this book because I couldn't talk about you know, I mean, what do you do with your fellow veterans? Hey, guys, sure. you know, I used to uh, I used to take female hormones and uh, live as a woman. Hey, how about those 49ers, huh? You know, mm-hmm. and that wouldn't have flown. <laughs> but your story is is very inspirational because here you would be dealing with all of these uh, difficult realities. And yet through you would really uh, with all that adversity still triumph in the end. Yes, I'd like to think so. <laughs> um I think you know part of what it was. Uh, I mean, the music thing. I've always loved music, you know, from classical to jazz. But uh, when I first heard my, you know, my first rock album in high school, it's like this. I this is what I wanted to do, and music sustained me through everything. And it was one of my dreams to play on stage in a working band as a transsexual. And you know, back in '86, I thought that's that's never going to happen. And and uh, nine years later, it did happen. Mm-hmm. I had my band Glamas on in San Francisco. I mean, we never got signed, but we we gigged a lot. We recorded a CD, and uh, um, I got to live out that mm-hmm. dream of performing on stage. Writing this book was really an important part of your process as, as well. How do you feel now that, that it's published? <laughs> um, I feel like I can't wait to get on to, you know, to rewriting the, the novel that I started, Um you know, this this getting this book done and out there was so important to me. Most of the transsexual autobiographies out there are from people, uh, women who transitioned, you know, trans women who transitioned in middle age. They they'd already established a career, wife, children, and so forth. They had a resume, and so they did have a different set of struggles. Whereas I was, I dropped out of college after two years. I had no resume. I really started from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And I I find that certainly um, with regard to transgender people, every story is so unique because everybody experiences gender identity in such a unique way. I think even more so than sexual orientation, that it's so important to have as many stories as possible. I agree. Well, there's a lot of overlap too. Um, and some trans women want to divorce themselves from the LGBT community. Mm-hmm. And um, and there's just I think there's so much overlap and there's so much confusion out there 
uh, amongst people. It's like, well, you know, they're not the same thing, so we should just educate people. And, and that's to me, that's tantamount to saying, okay, well, I'm transsexual and you should accept me, but, you know, you know, you can go, it's okay to discriminate mm-hmm. against gay people because I'm not like them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pro- that's an oversimplification, but mm-hmm. I think in, in that sense, we're all in the same boat together. It's to work together, but honor our diversity. A- absolutely true. Uh, and it's so great to have you on the program and here in the studio. I want to thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Mike. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bummed out. I didn't get to say fuck once. And, oh, and, 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 uh, and this <laughs> go is, right <laughs> ahead. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, all, the, all, all of the you know, interviews I've done, it's like, oh, I can't say it, I can't say that word. Can't say that word. So thanks for having me on the show. And for all you uh, good people in the Midwest out there, sorry I just said fuck so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, great having you uh, on. Not Your Average American Girl, a memoir. Christine Beatty is the author. We'll continue in a couple of minutes. The Michelangelo Signorelli Show on Sirius XMLQ 108. 